Welcome to Expera Marketing, the podcast where we innovate, create, and appreciate. Powered by Mostly Automotive Marketing with Matt Wilson. Here's the host of Expera Marketing, Chief Expera Marketer, Calvin Carasquillo. Ladies, gentlemen, Expera Marketers of all ages, we are back with another episode of Expera Marketing. This is Expera Marketing episode 25, Make It Sticky. Let's bring on my co-host, Matt Wilson. There he is. You can't bring me on too early because I have too many buttons to push over here. I'm in charge of all the buttons. If you bring me on too early, there's too much clicking going around. Too many buttons. We got to make mental notes of that. We got to simplify the process. We need one big red button. That's like the nuclear launch codes that just says launch episode. (laughs) I got too many buttons, but thank you. Good to, be, good to be here with you again, my friend. It's good, good to, to have you, as always. Matt, you've been watching any of the Olympics at all? Oh, my gosh. I am hooked. Oh, yeah. Oh, Do yeah. you follow me on Twitter, Colin? My personal Twitter, not my professional Twitter. Oh, but I've seen some of your Instagram posts. Yes, we're Instagram friends. I am all Olympics all the time. This is the only thing I've done work-related this entire week. I've been watching the Olympics. All right. Well, we will, we'll make sure that your your boss doesn't hear that. He's actually working very very hard. All right. And yes, then right, when yes, he has when he has any limited time, he's actually helping me with Xperia marketing. So Maybe yes, but in the title of this, we could put Jeff and Shane. Don't listen to this. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there love, you go. I love international sports. It's fantastic. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's great to uh, to have the Olympics back. I've been watching myself and just seeing the caliber of these athletes is is exceptional. But yeah, look. Sir. I'm coming full circle. So get this, the Olympics, high caliber athletes, experiment marketing, high caliber guests in the marketing space. Okay. That's pretty good. Right. So today, episode 25, right? Actually, I mean, we're a quarter of a hundred episodes. I I can't call it a quarter century because I guess you could, right? We're 25. It's a big accomplishment. So today, We're talking about something that I think is exceptionally important for dealers, and it might be a controversial topic just because there are, right? Ooh, spicy. Just because there are varying viewpoints on the topic that we're going to discuss today. But yes, make it sticky. In order to discuss this topic of what dealers need to do with SRPs, VDPs, and engagements, We have Carla Golisarian, who is the Director of Marketing at Velocity Automotive Solutions on. Bring her in. There she is. Hi, Carla. Hello. How are you? Thanks Thanks for the great introduction. I appreciate that. Of course. Have you been watching any of the Olympics by any chance or no? Uh, No. Uh, You know, I kind of just get updates now and then. So that's, that's all yeah, right. I just you know. away from too much news lately. <laughs> I, I hear you, but we have you today because you are our gold medalist when it comes to what we're about to talk about. You provided an awesome article to Dealer Marketing Magazine. You're obviously on their expert panel because you are an expert. That was driving shoppers to the dealership website is only part of the battle. Getting them to stick around and engage is the real feat. So before we get into that, tell us about yourself. Tell us what makes you you. Let our listeners hear it. So, um, you know, my entire career, I've been in one aspect of marketing or another. I I always say that I've been in digital since digital began. I, I got a master's in electronic commerce in 03. So I've gotten to see nearly two decades of an incredible digital journey. Um, for 15 years, I was e-commerce, BDC, and digital director for small to mid-sized automotive groups. And then last year, I made the big decision to leave retail and join Hugh Hathcock, founder of Elite CRM, and his team at Velocity Automotive Solutions. And um, we uh, launched an incredible product, Velocity Engage, in January this year, which is a digital sales presentation tool. And so I'm just excited that I get to help a lot more dealers instead of just the dealer principal or partners that I'm working for. We absolutely love it, you know, and, and that's one of the beauties of this space is not only do you have the dealership side of things and obviously our wonderful vendor partners, which you've got to experience both sides of it. So you have a lot of, of insight and a lot of experience with that 
So we thank you for being on. Obviously, me being on the dealership side, Matt being at an ad agency. Together, we are all one collective family, but what that means is a lot of insight. So let's jump into it because this episode, like I said, is very, very important for dealers to comprehend in terms of what we're about to discuss. So before we do that, though, let's give a little definition to dealers. And we're going to let you do some definitions for us, Carla. And first, let's talk about SRP. We love acronyms, right? So SRP, other words, search results page. Walk us through that. So um, the search results page on the dealership website is uh, the listing, the you know horizontal vertical listing of newer used cars that um, consumer shoppers go to. We often direct them and to directly land on what we call our SRPs. And then when um, a shopper clicks down to a specific vehicle, they're going to see the vehicle details page. And, and that's very important to us digital marketers in the car business because you know we know that the more BDP views we get, the more chance that we're gonna sell a car. Right, right. So it's not just about driving the traffic to the SRPs and VDPs. I mean, yes, that's a big portion of it, but it's about what the customer does on those pages. So engagement. Now talk about engagement for us. So, you know, um, for for years, we've been focusing on inventory views and, and they're important because, again, we know that you know, there's a common stat that if a car gets 30 BDP views in 30 days, it's got a 60 to 70 percent chance it's going to sell within that time frame. OK, but I like in BDP views to the eyeballs that we used to focus on in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. OK, it's a it's a passive activity, if you will. It's sort of like a customer coming on the lot and just looking around. Right. So when we talk about uh, VDP engagement, we're getting the customer, the shopper emotionally involved, connected, right? It's the demo drive. We're getting them in there so that they can feel it and touch it and interact with it. And when they do that, um, and we're seeing that uh, with more engagement per VDP view, as you want to call it, then we can often speed the sale of the car within half the time frame. So when we're talking about engagements, I mean, let's let's kind of dig into that too a little bit. We're talking about click to chats. We're talking about filling out forms. We're talking about looking at the vehicle information. So whether there's guides or car facts or all these lovely little widgets and kind of things that we could package up on our websites to, as you said, merchandise the vehicle almost as if the person was here on our lot looking at it. That's what we're talking about in terms of getting that engagement, correct? And, and that's true. And, you know, if you think about the typical SRP and BDP, OK, your SRP has, you know, your Carfax um, and your digital retailing tool and, you know, your standard uh, value, your trade, three mm-hmm. or four buttons get financing. Right. Because everybody wants the shoppers to get there. That's where we want to get them. OK, the, the and the BDP oftentimes with some of the templates that we are forced to work with, depending on what OEM and, you know, that you're representing, um, there are many limitations, okay, as far as what can be or is included on that VDP. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that shoppers, you know, we know they spend up to 15 hours researching before they go to buy, right? They, and they're doing this on OEM portals, they're doing this on industry sites, they're doing it on Google and review sites. So they need a lot more information, Mm -hmm. okay? And that information is not there to have them engage with on the BDP. I see. So as a, as a dealer, right, I would absolutely 100% agree with what you're proposing in this article, which is that dealers want to provide as much information as possible to a customer on the SRP. And the benefit of that is when you have all that engagement, obviously the customer, if they're super engaged, if you will, or truly interested in purchasing the vehicle, not only can they convert from that SRP, right? Because there would be a, on mobile, especially a click to call button or a click to chat, click to message, whatever it may be. But then if they do click through to the VDP, it's almost, it's a continuation of the SRP. So you're giving the customer best of both worlds. I could not agree with you more. And I think why we want to really touch base or, or drive this home, if you will, 
is because you have some stats that you provided in this article that I think were actually pretty shocking and might be a wake up call for a lot of dealers, right? So we get, I mean, if you want to talk about them, we pay for advertising, you know, a lot of dealers have advertising campaigns in place. They're paying tens of thousands of dollars on a monthly basis to drive traffic to SRPs and VDPs. Let's talk about what percentage of that traffic though actually ends up getting to an SRP and ultimately what percentage of that traffic gets to a VDP. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, so just yesterday I pulled up six uh, live dealer website, Google mm -hmm. Analytics, and I looked at a year's worth of data. And it's been an unusual year to say the least, but right. <laughs> um, I pulled uh, the data and I compared um, this data across all six uh, of these dealerships. And what you find is that 30 to 50% of your total website traffic will see an SRP, okay? Now, sometimes they're coming there from the homepage, but you know, we have our tactics where we're dropping them right on the SRP, the listing, mm -hmm. right? And then of that traffic, so if you do the math, if you just pull the number of your visitors and, and look at the, put your segment in there and look at the number of people that are viewing an SRP during their visit. Okay. And divide that by the total, you're going to get your percentage. Okay. Right. Then you take that number and I built segments out for those that just viewed a VDP. Okay. Those that viewed the SRP and those that viewed the SRP and the VDP. Mm -hmm. And I, there were two stores there that only had between 10 and 15% of that SRP viewer traffic go to a VDP, but that can go upwards to 35. So mm -hmm. those, though, and the numbers may, maybe you've got 37, maybe you're doing a great job, but so I keep thinking, you know, it's kind of like when, you know, you have your BDC and everybody is saying we need a 10% closing ratio. Well, if I've narrowed out and gotten rid of all my bad leads and I've got a hundred people that are actually in the market to buy a car, why should I be happy selling 10 cars? Right. right? What about the other 90 people? Those Absolutely. are the ones I want. You know? Absolutely. And that's why, you know, just to put it into perspective, Matt and I were talking about this prior to you joining us, but essentially let's just use round numbers here. And, and of course, dealer website traffic will, will uh, well surpass the number I'm about to throw out. But let's say you had a thousand people to your site. Okay, now you're saying that I'm going to go with the 30% sees an SRP. That's 300 people that see an SRP. And then ultimately you're saying 35% of that, it's 100 people, like you said, that actually get down to a VDP. And what we're doing is we're trying to rely on those 100 people to convert. And that means then you have to close all 100% or, you know, of those people to, to really have any sort of traffic or life in, in the showroom. And, you know, so I think that that's really important for dealers to understand that. Yeah. As opposed to what other vendors might say, it's not to say that, no, you don't want to, you want to forget about VDPs. What you're trying to do though, is if more, majority of your traffic's getting to an SRP, why are you trying to make it as hard as possible for a customer to receive all the information that they're looking for, especially when they're already on your site, they're trusting you to do business with, and then you're not going to give them the information. You're going to make them navigate to a different page that might provide them with a different experience. Why would you do that, Mr. and Mrs. Dealer? So it's crazy. <laughs> and you know, what's also interesting with that is that if you look at your total uh, website visitorship, they're going to look as a whole, two to four pages, your SRP one to four pages at the most. I mm -hmm. mean, if you got four with pure, just SRP visitors, you're killing it. Okay. So, and dealers spend all this money producing videos. They have VIP programs. They've got their, they've got their people beating their people up to get reviews because all of this material, this information is important in the shopper's journey, right? It's important to the ultimate decision that they're going to make. But the reality is if they're only viewing two to four pages, they're not seeing this information on your right. website. Right. Okay. They're leaving your website and they may go look on Google for reviews and then they may trip over another dealership website and then you've lost them. Okay. So why not, you know, put your best foot forward. Right. And, you know, we, and, and that's what 
we built Velocity Engage last year when things were kind of, you know, very quiet and shut down. And we said, what can we do to help make the experience easy for shoppers and to help dealers to be completely upfront and transparent to just sit because everyone's talking about, you know, streamlining and make it simple and frictionless and smooth and fast. Well, if you put it all up there, okay, you've got your reviews, everything up there. So the consumer that is viewing this SRP, many times the reason they're leaving, they're still in just a an awareness mm -hmm. phase, right? If you can give them something to entice them to move into the consideration phase of mm -hmm. the funnel at the SRP level, that's that's the holy grail. No, it makes plenty of sense. And so I think that that's really, you know, the point. And like I said, what we want to drive home here is you have a lot of uh, web providers, vendor partners, OEMs that focus on the VDP. And yes, the VDP is exceptionally important. I mean, you even just discussed it uh, and you have it in here. There's a direct correlation between VDP uh, engagements in a car deal. That's something that you found out while looking at the Google Analytics of those accounts that you had mentioned. And I think many dealers, if they have their analytics set up properly, would see the same thing. VDPs equate to a car deal. If the person ends up filling out those forms, chatting, clicking to call, whatever it may be. But how much of that or how much opportunity dealer, Mr. and Mrs. Dealer, are you losing or missing out on because people are ending up on the SRPs and they're not digging any further because there's no uh, information for them to ultimately get, you know, in terms of reviews and whether it's of the dealership or the product, Carfax uh, information, all these different things that you can package up and really nicely present to the customer. So I think that that's really, really fascinating. So now the next step is let's provide our listeners with actionable insights. What can a listener do to provide that information to, you know, the customer that's shopping on the site? Do you have some outlines or some steps or, you know, what, what can a dealer do? So, um, you know, the first thing that I would do if I was in retail again, you know, it, I would really take an honest look at my SRPs and my VDPs. And I think that consumers are getting immune to some of what they see, these grayed out icons and, you know, start your deal. And, you know, when we started in digital retailing, you know, it, it, there was this big hope that, you know, and, and we were all afraid of, oh my goodness, we're not going to make money on car deals anymore because everybody's going to be buying cars online. But the reality is, you know, digital retailing, it, you know, there's both ends of the spectrum where you have Carvana down here. But what the essence of digital retailing is really about consumer involvement mm -hmm. in the deal. That's what it is. They want transparency. They want to see the banks. They want to see, you know, all of this. So when you're looking at your your SRPs and you see these call to actions and these buttons, you would ask yourself, what could I do at this point to differentiate my dealership from another dealership and to compel the shopper to want to see more of the details, right? The vehicle details page. So what we do is we place digital portfolios on the SRPs mm -hmm. that are very compelling, you know, see all the videos and information about this car and this dealer view the entire digital portfolio. And when it opens, it opens up into that, you know, multimedia and interactive experience where they've got logically all the vehicle reputation window stickers right there at the SRP. Very important. So you're showing your reconditioning records, your inspection report, um, the factory e-brochure, the warranty information. They've got all the information. They don't have to call the dealership and ask for anything else. It's all right there in front of them. And then, you know, the, the experience right there is, I can't believe that they're showing me all of mm -hmm. this right? Without me having to call and ask and wait at the dealership for three hours while they go back to service to find out what was done on the car, what the inspection looked like. And then we move them down into the dealer reputation section where they're 
from the SRP, they can watch the meet the GM intro. They can see all of the details of your VIP program. They can see your dealer rater reviews. They can see your Google. Re they don't have to leave your SRP to get the information they need to decide if they actually want to do business with your dealership. And so then the the financial area. Yeah. So, so on the flip side, can there be too much stuff on the VDP? Well, and that's, you know, what we've done. We, we don't place all of this information on the BDP because, you know, um, there's that argument. And, and I've come face to face with that many times. But the reality is, if we're talking about being transparent, completely transparent and saving shoppers time, right? Mm. It, how much is too much information? Maybe information that they don't need or want. That might be too much information, but yeah. they're finding all of this in their research journey anyway. They're seeking it out. So I am of the opinion that giving it to them and saving them time and making the that digital retailing experience smoother, quicker, faster, easier, and a, a seamless transition to the showroom I think it's exceptional. I mean, um, you know, if I'm buying something, I don't want to have to piecemeal my decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to know everything that there is to know about the product that I'm considering buying. And um, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm of that school. No, I agree. And the more information you can provide, the less a person has to search around for it. And if they can get it all, because I'm always, you know, you're on this website and you're like, oh, I wonder about this. That's not on here. Let me check out this other site. And then that leads you down a rabbit hole before you know it. <laughs> you're gone from the site you were on. Yeah, you're watching cat videos on YouTube, next thing you know. <laughs> I was doing right before this, actually. Um, what about mobile? So mobile, you're dealing with less real estate, right? It's a, it may be, maybe a different, a different experience for the consumer. Uh, is it important? Um, to have all the same information or, or, or does it kind of, do you see it as needing to be reordered or maybe a little bit less or just talk to me about mobile a little bit? Well, our digital portfolios are fully responsive. Okay. Okay. So it's the same information. It's all there. It's obviously just accommodates the real estate space mm -hmm. and it responsively organizes itself. And so, you know, we do have, I mean, we have, for example, Toyota dealers that include the, factory brochures on, you know, uh, the Toyota technology and uh, Toyota financial services and, you know, e-brochures on everyone. And so when you're on the phone, you know, and you're opening a PDF, you're going to scroll through it. And sometimes that can be, you know, a little bit of a, a difficult thing, but they're doing that research anyway. Sure. I, I mean, they're doing it anyway. And it's it's we made it very easy where they can just save the PDF right to their phone and move on with the other information and look at it later or send it to themselves. Right. I think it's super powerful, even for a dealership. I mean, uh, imagine now using it internally. Right. So you're saying a customer can send it to themselves. Well, now how about a dealer can download that PDF and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you know, we know you've demonstrated interest in this vehicle. Tell you what, I'm going to send you something that I can walk you through on the phone or whatever their chosen method of communication is. And boom, it's that one stop shop. I want to touch on something that Matt had said, which is very true, even with the customer um, shopping or the consumer shopping behavior. Right now, everyone has different shopping patterns and behaviors and things like that. Matt might do something very differently than the way I do something, but ultimately in the end, we both buy a car, right? But what we're seeing in our space is that that shopping journey for each consumer is still disconnected, right? It's disjointed. And so one consumer might start their journey on one site doing research on a vehicle, and then ultimately they'll do a Google search and they'll end up on one dealership site. They'll bounce off of that site. They'll go back to a, a syndicated listing site. They'll bounce off of that site. They'll do another Google search, see another dealer that they want to work with based upon reviews. And now when they're on that site, okay, they might have a better idea of what vehicle they want. So now they're really low in the funnel. But ultimately, the argument on behalf of, of you guys and Velocity Automotive Solutions is that if you got the customer to your site to begin with and they were seeing all that information, you not only save them a whole bunch of time, but actually as a dealer, 
you are, are building your credibility very early on and you're keeping that person in your ecosystem as opposed to having them go into all these different digital ecosystems. And that's very, very powerful as a dealer. We know the space is so hyper competitive at this point that the sooner you can get a customer onto your site, have them stay there, have them engage, everything you talked about in this article, that's a customer that's going to be yours. Well, and you know, it's interesting. We have stores, we do have a showroom mode on our digital portfolios. And we have, we, we, as a matter of fact, Hugh just did a uh, interview with um, uh, Troy Duham, the owner of Premier, and they're on our solution. And mm -hmm. he was talking about how salespeople, if you're selling Toyotas, okay, and you've got a Honda on the lot, the salesperson, not every salesperson knows no. everything there is to know about that car, right? But by opening the digital portfolio on the tablet out in the lot, you know, he's got the window sticker there. He's got the reconditioning records. He's got the factory e-brochure. He's got all that information to really answer all of the customer's questions. He doesn't have to waste their time and go back to the desk and go to service and try to find out. And I'll look it up and let me see. He's got all the factory spec specifications. And so, um, what we're finding is that it is a great salesperson's tool. They, they'll meet a customer on the lot. I tell me about this car. You know what? Come back to my desk because I've got every bit of information that there is available right at my desk and open up the digital portfolio and do the sales presentation. Right. I love it. So you touched on a couple things within the portfolio, right? So whether a dealer chooses to utilize your solution or decides to do their own variation of this, right? And one of the things I do want to touch on, um, obviously we have you guys on for a reason. It's, it's so hopefully there are listeners that come and utilize your products and we love to show off, you know, all the new technology in the space. But so one of the things that I do just want to clarify, and, and Matt had kind of talked about this. So your uh, solution is responsive. So thus, obviously, on desktop and on mobile, it will look fantastic. But one of the things, too, that dealers, hey, if you're thinking, oh, I want to do this, you know, what you can do is just have a call to action button. So a button on the site that then links to a specific landing page, if you will, that's been built out for that vehicle that has all that information or opens up, you know, that portfolio of all that information. So it is a dealer can do this, too. Uh, obviously it's probably much easier just to utilize a solution, but you know, that's, that's what we want to do. And that's what we do on this podcast is we like to give dealers these ideas. We like to make or have them find efficiencies in their operations that they can utilize. Um, so it really, really great talking about the portfolio though. So, I mean, videos, what resonates? So you, first of all, you said window stickers. I could not agree with you more factory reports, any of the servicing history of a vehicle, if it's a pre-owned vehicle, uh, videos you had mentioned. So what kind of videos and things like that are integrated into your solution? So we can add any videos that the dealership wants to add. You know, if they've got factory, you know, overviews of a specific car, uh, you know, a lot of salespeople will do walk arounds walk with around. all of the used inventory live walk around. So whatever video they want to add. But one important thing is, um, now, you know, with Hugh's been in the business for 37 years and we have, you know, advanced integration. So we do have full integration with the CRMs where right. uh, you can set it up to fire a digital portfolio to every single lead that comes in. The other really great thing is when I let's say that you're interested in a car, I send you a portfolio when you open it up and you look at the window sticker and you look at the reconditioning records, we have a full heat mapping, behavioral heat mapping module, where when I start my morning in the BDC and I send out my digital portfolios and I'm ready to start making that first phone call, I can see the engagements of each shopper. So it gives me something to talk about, right? I, you know, I, I sent you the factory, the window sticker, did you take a look at that? So we have full heat mapping that help BDC agents and salespeople give them conversation points and um, give them some type of insight into shoppers intentions. From what you guys have seen, and let me ask you this, and, and if you don't know, that's okay. What is the hottest point that people are looking at when it comes to these reports? Or is it just so different per whatever the customer is interested in? Well, you know, specifically, you know, we've got a, a very unique situation with the used car market right uh -huh. now. So yeah. we do provide unlimited uh, window sticker pools on any bin for any 
customer using our program so they can have the car in stock or not. And, and we have managers that are using uh, that tool during appraisals. Uh, they just pull the window sticker right up and uh, consumers love it on used cars because they can see the original factory specifications. And right now, a lot of dealers are paying, you know, different vendors and providers just to have those window stickers on their website. And mm -hmm. we have it baked in. So um, that is, you know, that's a critical, critical tool. And then the reconditioning records. It's important for shoppers want to see, is this a safe uh, and quality vehicle? And dealers need to show consumers the $1,400 and the $2,000 that they invested to make the, the long-term cost of ownership go down for the customer to making sure that they have a quality. And it helps salespeople justify pricing, right. you know, this customer. This is why this car is priced like this. We have two thousand dollars in it, and we brought it to this certain condition. So, um, you know, the, those are probably the most critical um, and useful tools to both consumers and dealers. Right. So I think that ties back to exactly what you know you discussed at the beginning of the episode, which was that transparency. Right. People are looking for transparency. They've had enough of grayed out buttons and unlock your best price and oh. get today's <laughs> price. You know, why is today's price different than tomorrow's price? Oh, mm -hmm. supply and demand. We don't have vehicles, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's just about being transparent with the customer and wow. providing them with all that information. And I think it's, I think it's phenomenal because, you know, if that's, if I was a customer, that's exactly what I would want. I would want all this information at my fingertips. I wouldn't want to have to go to all these different channels to find the information I'm looking for. If I decided to do business with a specific dealership or if I was searching dealerships in the area and I had maybe two or three that I was considering, yeah, whoever had the most information and whoever ultimately provided me with the best customer experience, this ties into that. That's the dealer that you would do business with. I mean, it's just plain and simple. So I really, really like it. Uh, I mean, is there anything, let's just say in the next five, 10 years, we usually like to have our guests pull out their crystal balls, if you will. Uh, I mean, do you see this, the information, providing that from a dealership website, becoming more transparent, which we already see that's, that's what people want. I mean, how much more important do you think that that becomes for customer experience and ultimately winning a customer at a dealership? Well, I, I certainly don't think that we're going to go backwards on sure. consumer expectations. Um, you know, the old way that we used to sell cars. I mean, I trained BDCs on how to get appointments and overcome without talking about the price of the car. And we just can't do that today. And so I think um, we're going to see that it's, it is an expectation you give me everything that I need up front now. And, and we see that now every single day we deal with customers that I want a complete breakdown of the price. I want to know about your, your oil changes for life program and, and everything. I want to know it all because I'm doing all my research. I'm not coming down there and spending six hours in the dealership. So I don't think that we're going to go backwards on that at all. And I, but I think what is going to happen and we're already seeing it happen is that we, we realize as dealers, we don't have to be afraid anymore that we can be transparent, have an honest transaction and still make a profit make so that we yeah. can pay our people and run our dealerships. Because, you know, we pay extra money all the time for great service, okay? Um, for a better burger, for a better meal, for good, you know, customer service. And I think that that is what we're seeing. It's translating to gross and CSI. And so I think that we've got so much traction in that, you know, uh, direction that we're not going back at this point. No, I, I could not agree with you more, Carla. And I mean, I was just thinking, obviously, from a marketing perspective, how very powerful could it be too that your dealer, I mean, a lot of it, right? So having the, the technology is one part of it. The other part is sure a process on how you handle that. And that's how we could look at digital retailing. But then I always say that the last component to a successful DR strategy or even something like this is how you are advertising that or marketing that. So now imagine Mr. or Mrs. Dealer, you put something like this in place at your dealership and then you can talk about it and you, you know, put that out to the customer saying, 
here's, you know, we have the most transparent buying process, or we'll make sure you have all your information. We are one stop shop. I mean, that is how you start branding yourselves to build that value where then ultimately a customer comes to you because they know you are the go-to one-stop shop transparent dealer and that is how you win in the space so carla thank you what's going on at, at velocity automotive solutions is there anything top secret that you can talk to us about or do you have to kill us if you told us <laughs> well we do have some exciting news but okay it's top secret yeah uh. <laughs> i'm very fortunate to uh work for a man that has been in this business he is and doesn't have to be, but he is very committed awesome. to solving dealers' problems. And so we do have something really exciting coming right. up. We'll get some more information on that. But um, I'm the one that puts the word out. So oh, we, we heard we, it here we, first. <laughs> right. Yep. And uh, right. yep. So we're we're just very excited. I'm I'm happy that um, I'm helping a lot of dealers now instead of just a couple. So Absolutely. love it. Yeah, no, and we hope that you get to continue helping more and more dealers. I mean, the, the technology is great. It's a no brainer. It makes plenty of sense. I think dealers need to stop thinking like dealers and need to start thinking like customers, right? And that's a lot of, of what I battle with too, even on the dealership side of things is I say, okay, this works from this perspective, but how does it work from the customer's perspective? Or then sometimes I focus so much on the customer's perspective that then I'm getting calls from my, my sales managers downstairs because they're like, I don't know how to navigate to this. Like, what did you do? You changed it from how it was. And I say, oh, that's because it's easier for the customer to do it X, Y, and Z way. So Carla, thank you so much for being on. We truly appreciate it. Uh, for anyone that wants to contact Carla, actually, I'm going to direct them to dealer marketing where you are a expert panelist, as I'd mentioned earlier on, right? Dealermarketing.com. Yep. You can yes. click on experts at the top of the web page, and then you can find Carla's lovely photo on there. And you can actually connect with her on LinkedIn. You could send her messages, Absolutely. all these great things. So Carla, thank you so very much for being on. Truly appreciate it. Great article. Thank you both. I appreciate appreciate you both helping dealers, you know, get the information. Yeah, that's out. it. We help each other. That's it. It's yes, one big absolutely. family, one big community. Uh, thanks to people like you. Thanks to people like Matt, of course, and uh, you know, dealer marketing. Thanks for you know everyone putting absolutely. together all the resources. So thank you once again. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Matt. That's yes, pretty interesting sir. stuff, huh? Not something I would have thought of before, really. I, I always like it when the person brings numbers. She brought numbers. Right. Show me numbers. Right. Uh, I'm a big like data that. guy. I like the data. I, I actually, too, was very shocked on just the percentage of people that end up getting to an SRP and then ultimately a VDP. I, I would have thought it was actually a lot higher, especially yeah. when we are spending money to drive traffic to you know those specific pages. But it's a very valid point, right? I mean, you know, big buzzword has been Facebook AIA ads, right? So they're automotive yeah. inventory ads. Those obviously are, are uh, VDP specific, but yeah. you know, then it's true. Yeah. If you don't have a solution in place like that, or if you're not doing dynamic search ads, you actually really are dropping people off on the SRPs. And that's yeah. probably where a majority of dealerships spend is it's it's in your search it's in your social your your display your retargeting but realize yeah. dealer you are dropping people off on an srp and you're hoping that the person clicks on the vdp when in reality why hope when you can give them all the information on the srp and then know that they'll get the information they're looking for it turns out a lot less of them, a lot less than we thought are clicking on the vdp a lot less than we thought so yeah. it's very very important make that process as frictionless for the customer, make it as informative for the customer, and then in turn, realize how you internally, Mr. and Mrs. Dealer, can use that for yourselves. You have all this information in the palm of your hands, literally on your mobile device. You have mm -hmm. a brochure, all these things that you not only can talk to a customer about while they're on the lot, but you can do it in the ether of the internet. Send it to them digitally, call them up, chat with them about it. It's all there. What a great resource. Definitely. Uh, ether of the internet, by the way. Ether Very of good. the internet. Thank nice. you. I, I, yeah, I'm good. All right, guys, stay in touch with us. Like and follow us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. You can find us, Xperra Marketing, and of course, mostly automotive marketing with Matt Wilson. Connect with us on LinkedIn because we want to hear from you and all of your information. See you guys next time. See you.